Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Yakuza 5. EX hard difficulty video walkthrough. This is part 2, chapter 3. It is the Frozen Raw. And we're introduced to the Bear Grylls section of Saijima's quest, where we're going to be interacting with these people who live in this... I think this is technically a hamlet, because that is a stream, goddammit. Uh, this mountain frozen landscape. And I actually found this section to be incredibly fun. It, I, it wasn't at the beginning. At the beginning, I'm like, what is this? This is weird. Why, I, why am I not fighting? But the more I played it and I got into the whole politics of the village and the hunting and I got better hunting equipment, it really grew on me. Uh, so much so, I did everything here. So it was pretty damn cool. But this is a walkthrough, so we're not going to be doing that because it does take a long time. I, I recommend you do it, though, on your playthrough, if you've not. Because when you sell 1 million yens worth of supplies to the person who likes all the animal bullshit, he will give you a bloody binding, which is the item that lowers your defense by like 50 on every one. Knives, guns, punches or whatever. But it gives you three times the heat accumulation. So the reason I'm able to go into heat mode so frequently is because of those that piece of equipment. It's my favorite piece of equipment in the game, outside of maybe... Uh, the way it worked in Yakuza 2, where it gave you higher damage, which I think is a much better tool, personally. But we're, we're, we're going out into the, the the wilds here, this this crazy tundra, and it, it hurts you ambiently being out here. Depending on your, your ability to survive this area will depend on how much it hurts you, and the more you play, the better you get at doing it. You have to eat to survive while you hunt, and uh, I've got a couple of of good strategies for shooting stuff. Uh, I don't know if I'm using a better gun because I did unlock the golden one and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know if you'll see that in this particular sequence. You might not be able to notice this so much because it kind of flows better than I thought it would, but there's about 50 cuts in this video. Editing out conversations, editing out cutscenes, editing out essentially Yakuza stuff. That's how much shit is happening here that you have to wade through to get to the parts where you move. It's it's absolutely crazy, and it doesn't seem like it when you're playing because you're kind of into it and you, you know, you're just playing. But when you when you're trying to go through it quickly, that's when you really realise just how much talking and cutscenes and nonsense there is in the game. And uh, I've said this earlier on, and I'll and I'll reiterate it here. I think this game would really benefit from an option where when you pause it when it, when someone is talking or when there's a cutscene or when there's a massive dialogue section. In the cutscenes, it says press circle to skip the cutscene. It should say press circle to get to gameplay. Or press triangle to do that. So if you want to listen to the, the dialogue afterwards. Because, I'm telling you guys, every time I record these, how long are these videos? Anywhere between like 8 minutes and 20. Closer to 10 though than anything else. This is what, 12 minutes long this one? This video to record might have been an hour and a half raw file. And it's all me sat there tapping X because that's essentially what Yakuza is when you get down to it. There is so much of it, it's ridiculous. And uh, it would be great if they would streamline it for people, because I like playing these games, I really do. And th the thought of going back through this game is not appealing at all. Because of the Haruka section, which you cannot skip, and it winds me up to death because it's incredibly slow and it takes too long. And because of just how much dialogue you have to mash through. Like, if, if you could skip all that shit completely, I'd probably try doing speedruns for these games. That's how much I enjoy them. But they're just not designed that way. And it sucks, it does. And one of the things I'm hoping is the ultimate battle. Once I've beat all those bullshit ones and you, you, you unlock the hard ones, like the climax ones, where they're all the boss fights, I'm hoping I can fight all the bosses and I can do it without having to do the bullshit. And then I'll be fine, because I can get all the fights I want with standard dudes in the arena if I want to do that, and there's a couple of those ultimate battles where you take on minions if I want to do that, but it's the bosses that, you know, I really want to do, and I want to be able to play against them, because they're the stuff that I enjoy the most. When you're fighting one-on-one -on -one in this game, I think it's great. You know, it still has a lot of the issues that I've discussed, but it's, it's where the game truly shines, and I've got a, a schedule update coming today, you, you should probably see that, of course. When, when you see this video, it'll have been several days before. But in that, I've actually got some gameplay from the Colosseum, and it's on EX Hard, which made a big difference, actually. I was quite surprised. And here we go, trying to shoot the animals. If you hit them in the head, it puts them down. Uh, if you hit them anywhere else, they tend to run away. Uh, I, I swear that that was a headshot. And it was. 
There's a there's a shot coming up later on which I'm almost certain was on the face and it runs off. <laughs> but the shooting is bad. There's no two words about it. It does not control well. It controls incredibly awkwardly. It's like 2001 mechanics. You know, it's the equivalent of the tank control Resident Evil compared to the, you know Resident Evil 6. The movement is so different. The shooting in this game is is arguably the weakest part of it. Uh, I would love to see it improve. I really would. If they could somehow do something about the shooting so it was its own section, as similar to the chase sections but with shooting, and the controls were completely different but they felt good, a la Stranglehold, or Wet, or Max Payne, or whatever you want to say. Insert third person shooter that has interesting shooting. I think that would be fantastic. But as it stands, having guns that automatically aim... Yeah, that didn't that look close, that shot? That looked real close to me, but it, it missed apparently. You know, guns that automatically aim, that have that weird knockdown bullshit, it's just not good. And whenever there's an enemy in this game and a group of people and one of them has a gun, it's not fun. You know, unless you're wearing those three pieces of equipment that automatically block bullets, it's it's miserable because it just it doesn't feel great. And it would be great if they had a way to break the weapons like you can do in the Arkham games, but you can't. And you know what's really bullshit and, and one of the things that I really disagree with? You can kill a dude with a gun, get his gun, use all the bullets in it, throw the gun, and if an enemy picks it up, they will have unlimited bullets in a gun that has no bullets in it. And I know it's a game, and I appreciate, you know, it's the computer, they play by different rules. But is that not bullshit to you? I, I find it very difficult to appreciate that, because to me, it's just, it's cheating. It's 100% cheating, and... There's a, a mentality of some people who, whenever it's the computer that's concerned and it's not another human being, they just don't see the point in, in thinking that there's anything wrong with that because it's like it's the computer, you know, it's just the way it works. But to me, I don't. I don't. I, I think it's, it's wrong. I really do. And I, I'm not a fan of any kind of cheating like that. I don't like the computer having um, abilities and functions that the player doesn't. I don't like it when they can do something that you literally cannot do. I, I like it to feel... Like there's some kind of even playing field, like when you get hit or when you get beat, that you deserved it, rather than just being like, oh, he's doing that move again, or he's doing that thing again that's nonsense. And Like a great one is, is, is Majima, Majima Goro. This is a boss who has the best dodge in the game. He has a dodge that he can train, it, it, he can train, sorry, he can chain it endlessly. And all he does is this crazy purple dashes and it's super quick and he does it, he does it forever until you turn your back and then he attacks you because he's really predictable and you can use that to punish him. But he can just do it. And there's nobody on the game that can do that when you play as him. The closest is like Akiyama and at most he does two. And this dude does unlimited dashes. And you get to play as, as Goro on, in Yakuza 0, which is a game I'm super excited to play, but it's incredibly expensive to import, so fuck that. And I'm wondering if you can do that when you play as him, because that's what he does against you, and you know that they won't give you that, because it's the way that games are balanced, you know, they, they balance them in such a particular way that they're trying to fuck the player, and a lot of the times, that's what the balance is, the balance is making it so that the player has to struggle to achieve something, and they have to learn a set way of approaching it, and a certain way of achieving the mechanic, and I've got no problem with that, that's what games are. You know, it's problem solving, it's trial and error, it's it's learning to understand and adapt, it's, it's getting a higher level of expertise in something and getting the muscle memory and the reflex to do it, and that's what video games are. But when it's stuff that doesn't make sense, I, I find it really, really confusing. Like a great one is the grabs. The grabs in these games are wonderful. And they're wonderful because they're bullshit. An enemy can grab you from a range where a grab that you would do would whiff. You can be so close to an enemy, do a grab and whiff because that's how the game works. It doesn't make any sense. Yet the computer has a vacuum property where they will grab you from a ridiculous amount of distance. And, and the worst part is they have built-in leech gloves, which I'm not too sure what they're called in this game. They might be called that. Which are gloves that when you grab people, you steal their heat. And I don't think the computer steals your heat, it just drains it. So you lose your ability to do your good moves. And it's incredibly frustrating. But watch this. See what I did there? That is a guaranteed headshot on every single bear. It'll work on all of them, including uh, Yama Oroshi, which is this dude. And I don't know what this section is all about. I think you have to take a hit to move it on because I own this bear straight up. So the principles of bear shooting. 
You can only shoot the bear and hit it when it's charging you or uh, when it's doing an animation between animations. So watch, he's going to turn back on himself and I'm going to wait for it and shoot him during the transition. If I shot at him when he was walking to the left or right, he would dodge it automatically because he's a beast. But if you do it as he transitions back the other way, there's nothing he can do. He cannot dodge. So watch. So watch how he's walking now. He will dodge if I shoot him now. But the moment he turns, boom. It's a guaranteed shot. And on a normal bear, you'll kill them with one shot. But this is Yama Orochi, and this is some kind of weird scripted event. So I put about 20 bullets in this dude's forehead, and the game just doesn't move on. And I believe, but I don't know for certain, that you have to take a hit here or some kind of hit. Because when it happens, and it does happen, uh, it progresses the game. But yeah, bears. Also, when he charges like this, perfect time to shoot him. So there is uh, Yama Roshi attacking uh, Okudera. And hopefully it gets on with this as I load my gun. Because everything about the hunting is incredibly old-fashioned. It's slow as shit to aim. It's slow as shit to reload. It's incredibly just... It doesn't feel good in any way, shape, or form. It's completely passable, and you can get used to it, but it doesn't feel interesting. And all of it is is very janky in that way, you know. It's, it's like one of those mechanics they throw in to just add diversity, and these games do that a lot, but I think some of them have been developed way more. For instance, if you look at the difference between chasers in Yakuza 3 to the chasers in this game, it's very different. I think they've missed... Some of the, the decent features they had, for instance, in, in Yakuza 4, you could do this turning dash move, which on this game, it's just like a dodge now, which doesn't seem to work as well. But these features do evolve between the games, and who knows, maybe they'll be hunting in Yakuza 6, and it'll it'll feel a lot better. But as it stands, very interesting sequence, that. You'll have to let me know what you felt about it when you played it. But thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully this video helped, and as always, you take care now.